So what we have here is they tell us that we have a rocket system consisting of two parts, A and B, um, as shown in the diagram, blah, blah, blah. The rocket is traveling vertically upwards at a constant speed of V, which they've shown us over there, when an internal explosion causes A to move downwards at a speed of a third V. It says, ignore all external forces. And the question says, calculate the velocity of B in terms of V immediately after the explosion. Right. Now, some of you are going to read this and you're going to be like, what the heck is going on here? Um, because there's all these M's and these V's and these three M's and two M's. It's weird, right? But let me quickly give you a quick explanation or a little bit of a summary. Remember that whenever we have two objects, see, we've got object number one and we've got object number two. If there is a question in an exam where those two objects are going to crash into each other or move away from each other, then what we will typically do is we will use the conservation of linear momentum, okay? So whether they crash into each other or maybe they move away, you know those questions that we sometimes see in textbooks where you've got a person standing on a skateboard and then they throw their bag. That's the same type of thing. What we have now is we have a rocket that is going to separate from its other part. And this is how a rocket actually works in real life. You see on TV when the rocket goes up and then after a few minutes, it separates and one of the pieces is gonna fall back down to the earth and the other piece is gonna um, shoot off into the sky. Okay, well, it's gonna keep going up. So, <clears throat> so yeah, so guys, in these types of questions, we're just gonna use uh, the conservation of linear momentum and that's the one that goes something like this. Mass of A multiplied by the velocity of A initial plus the mass of B multiplied by the velocity of B initial equals to the mass of A velocity of A final plus the mass of A velocity, whoops, I mean B, I mean B. Okay, so it's this type of formula. Then please make sure that you always choose a direction as positive. I'm gonna choose upwards as my positive direction. You can choose down if you wanted to. It's absolutely fine. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to go plug everything in. Okay. Now, what some students like to do, and there's nothing wrong with this, is they like to combine these two together. Why? Because the objects are together in the beginning. You can do it like that if you want to, but I'm just going to keep it separate. So I'm going to say that the mass of A is 3m. The velocity of A is obviously going to be V plus the mass of B is 2M times by the velocity, which is V. Of course, you could have combined this and called it 5M. It doesn't really matter. Mathematically, you're going to get to the same point. And then on the other side, um, <clears throat> on the other side, we've got the mass of A, which is 3M. Now, here's where you have to be careful. Look what they're saying here for A. They're saying that it's going to move downwards with a velocity of a third V. So we chose upwards as positive, but it's going to move down. So we say minus a third V. See that? And then if we go plus um, M of B, sorry, which is 2M times by its velocity, which we don't no, that is what the question is asking us to calculate. So we don't know. Um, we don't know what this part is over here. So now what we do is we just go ahead and simplify. So this will become 3mv plus 2mv equals. Now, this part here, you can just multiply the three and the minus third together, <clears throat> but you should get negative v or negative, negative one. Mv plus 
M V B F. Okay, geez, imagine showing this to like someone in grade eight. They would be terrified of grade 12. Um, so what we can do now is we can add these two together. I know some of you are probably thinking, what do you mean, Kevin? I'm terrified and I'm in grade 12. So 5MV is equal to um, minus 1MV plus 2MV of B final. Then we can take the minus 1MV over. So we end up with 6MV equals to 2M. Then be careful. This is one term, velocity of B final. Okay. So what happens now is that you can cancel out uh, these m's because they're on the say they they both on the, that side, and so if you had to go in, um, if you had to go calculate the velocity of b final, you should end up with six v over two, and so the velocity of b final should be three v, and then we'll just say meters per second. The graph below shows the average force exerted by A on B during the explosion, okay? So you can imagine that um, these two things over here, A and B, they are going to cause some type of force on each other. So A is going to push B up and B is going to push A down, obviously, hey? And we know that, um, yeah, so A is going to push B up and B is going to push A down. It says, name the physical quantity represented by the area. Now, you can't just look at this and be like, oh, easy, force and time. Uh, what is that? What is that? Let me rather show you the proper way to do it. We know that if you have a rectangle, and if this is A, or no, let's say this is B, and this is C, how do we calculate the area? Well, we know that area is equal to B times C, okay? So if you want to calculate the area of this shape, it would be whatever the Y axis is multiplied by whatever you have on the X axis, yeah? So that's going to be whatever the Y axis is. So the area is going to be average force. So I'm just going to say force multiplied by the X axis, which is time. So that's going to be like that. Now, you might remember a certain formula that has F and T next to each other. Can you think of anything? Well, remember that we have this formula on our formula sheet, which goes like this. It goes F net delta T equals to delta P. Or some of your formula sheets might have it a little bit different. Um, they sort of change it up every now and then. So you might have it like that. But the point is, if you can get the F and the T next to each other and they are being multiplied, then that is exactly what we have over here. Okay, so it says, what is the physical quantity? Now you have two options here. We know that F multiplied by T is called impulse. But because the formula also has an equal sign over here, you can also say that it's the change in momentum because this is change in momentum so you could say impulse or you could say change in momentum the next question 4.4 redraw the graph on the same set of axes Sketch, go ahead, redraw the graph in your answer book. Oh, I see. So they wanted us to just redraw what we have. Then it says, on the same set of axes, sketch the graph that B exerts on A. Now, guys, can you remember from grade 11 that if I punch the wall in front of me, the wall is going to, the, the amount of force that I can exert on the wall is going to be the exact same as the wall is exerting on me. That is Newton's third law. When two objects exert a force on each other, the amount of force is going to be the same for both objects. The direction, though, is the opposite. So if the one is going up, the other one goes down. And if the one's going left, then the other one must go right. If we have that over there, then um, 
Okay, so what we have originally is we have, I'm just gonna draw the original graph, right? Now, what we must understand is that the amount of time and the amount of force for B on A and A on B is the same. However, the direction is gonna be different. So if the one force is five Newtons, maybe that's A on B, then if you look at F force of B on A, it must be negative five. And so we're gonna go into the negative X axis, I mean the negative Y axis now when we draw the other one's graph. So the other one's graph is gonna look like this. Okay, it's gonna be in the negative because it's got an opposite sign. 